Hey guys, Ty Friedman here from Biotopia. I want to show you my 75p nature aquarium, which has grown out a little bit since I set it up. So I've been on holiday. I was in the south of France, which was absolutely fantastic. And I've come back and I haven't actually pruned this tank since I set it up, but I came back after this week and the Pegastemon quadrifolius, the Pegastemon octopus has gone a bit mad. The Myriophyllum has grown quite long and leggy. The other plants seem to be doing very well, like the Hygrophila polysperma back there. So you may have noticed that the fish in this display have changed. The previous fish that were in here, the Costello tetras, Hemigramus ionuary, I thought they would really work, but they were just too green. They sort of disappeared. They were a little bit timid. They just didn't quite fit. And so I thought, what could I replace them with? And I settled upon the humble black neon tetra, Hyphosobrycum herbaltexel rodei. This is one of my favorite fishes, and they really work. They, they're not so you know, vivid that they pop out and disrupt the display. They're very much a part of the harmony, the green, the subtle textures. You know, it's a very tranquil scene, but those little red accents above the eye pop out. The lateral line really shines. They're perfect for this display. There's also a few Rasbora dorsiosalatus, the emerald eye rasboras. These are some rescues. They've found their way into here, and I want to get some more of them. I really like them. They kind of hang out in the vegetation at the back. You see that little blue pinprick around the eye pop out. And to complement them, there are four pygmy gouramis, Trichopsis pumula, who are quite cryptic. You have to get up to the tank and sit there for a while, and then they, then they turn up. So there's the three different species in here. I think that's all I need, really. I'm really enjoying it. The fish love that it's completely overgrown. They're probably not going to appreciate me going in there and pruning it. That's what I have to do. The thing I hate doing is pruning plants. It's not because I'm lazy. It's not because I don't want to do it because it's effort. I love it when they grow rampant and I always feel really bad cutting them back. But you have to. It's part of the aquascaping you know, rule. If you want your plants to grow lush, especially stem plants, you need to prune them back. Often doing so will encourage them to put out denser growth. You know, you cut one head, it will put out two, like a sort of hydra. It becomes bushier, prevents you getting these long leggy stems like the myriophyllum up here. And it just, you know, it, it, you would do it in a garden. You prune back plants for their health and create shape and form. I like this sort of wild jungle look. However, it does need a bit of taming. I hope you guys can hear me. I had a lot of feedback on my previous videos that the microphone wasn't any good. So I've ordered some microphones and hopefully they're helping. So I've been sitting in front of this tank and thinking, you know, what, what do I need to do? do? I need to prune back plants. I want to add a few other things in here. I had the Rotala Vietnam, which was in this back. It was not happy. It got quite shaded out by the mirror film. Didn't really work. So I'm thinking, I've pulled it out and I'm thinking of replacing it with Myriophyllum SP Guyana and creating quite a bushy, soft texture in that corner. Maybe move the Myriophyllum Rorima, the orange one, a bit further back. And then I've got Pegastemon stellatus, which is a cousin of the Pegastemon quadrifolius, but it becomes a bit pink and purple under good lighting. So I'm thinking of adding that in to add a bit more color. And I've also inherited a large amount of uh, Ludwigia palustris minis, very vivid red plant from my good friend Dave at Aquarium Gardens. He took it out of a display that had been set up by Pavel Kulander. And I was very sorry I missed Pavel's amazing workshop. I watched some of the video that he did. I was driving back from France. So they take, took down a display that Pavel had set up and they set up a new one, very different style. I'm looking forward to seeing how that grows in. This is my style. Chaotic jungle. Looks great. Fish love it. I was just in this area of France in the Dordogne and I was snorkeling a lot in the Vizier River. It's beautiful. It's really a massive chalk stream. You know, water coming up through limestone bedrock and really clear water. Lots of aquatic plants, uh, Polymagetan species, water crowsfoot, the Ranunculus aquatilis. There was a lodia in there. It was stunning. I saw the first time in my life I saw barbel, this great big fish in the flesh. Got to observe uh, gudgeon 
uh, in the wild, which is really fun. And that sort of chaotic nature of the plants, they were flowing in the current and they provided all this area of shadow for the fishes to move in. And there were small minnows, there were European bitterling, there were other small fishes, chub, roach, perch, living in and around these great swaying fronds. And I sort of thought, well, there's a bit of what's going on here. <laughs> what's going on here? But I need to bring it back. So that's today's job. And I thought I would share it with you. It's an update. Again, I don't relish doing it. It needs to be done. And ultimately, the display will be better. Well, that I don't need to prune back, but do need some care. The Java fern, which is doing really well, but I need to pull out some of the older decayed leaves, give it uh, the chance to put energy into the younger new growth. There's some new nice leaves coming out. Crypts are doing well. I can leave those alone. The Helanthium tenulum is doing really nicely. It's just uh, filling out quite well. There was the Persicaria at the back. I think that's been completely overshadowed by the Potomagetan quadrifolius, which also oh, Pegestamon quadrifolius, which just grows so rampantly. I'm looking forward to actually giving it some love and attention, even if it's not my favourite task as it's pruning. But I think it'll do the tank good. Fish are not going to be happy about it, but there you are. So, yeah, let's do some pruning. Hello, pruning time. What do you need? Ideally, some aquascaping scissors. These are sort of fairly heavy duty ones, good for things like Echinodorus and thick stem plants. These are a little delicate, lighter, good for pruning things like carpets. There are many different kinds of tools out there, everything from the extremely expensive to the extremely cheap. These are sort of mid range and they work very well for me. So I'm gonna to have to start by taking out the bulk, the things that are just clogging up the display right now. So sorry, fish, but I'm gonna to have to do that and I hope you forgive me the disruption. You don't want to prune your, two, your plants too, well, vigorously. I tend to go sort of two thirds of the way down the stem. Maybe here with this one, pull it out. I've got a bucket down here can go in there. I like this one poking out here, but again, got to be ruthless, got to be cruel, to be kind. And some of these we can replant. Any excess we'll uh, pull out. Here there's a stem that's already got two heads. So I'm going to chop each of the heads so that each of those will put out two heads and it'll get bushier and denser. Some people may want to turn off their filters whilst they're doing this. I I haven't done that. I'm starting by clearing out this middle middle section here and giving us a, a bit of a basis. You need to sort of clear one area and then you can start seeing where the open areas are going to be, what the flow of the plants is, the dynamic, where you want to create angled bits. So this is a very thick stem, but chop it. Oh, there is a persicaria. As I said, it had been completely overgrown by the other plant. And you can be a bit, you know, rough and ready. You can chop through multiple stems at once. You can select an individual stem and chop it out. Well, how do you want to do it? It's your thing, your creation, and you're not damaging the plants by this unless you prune them, you know, too close to the base. I'm not doing that. Like I said, about anything from half to two thirds down the length of the stem. If you just prune the tops, you're going to be back pruning and pruning the plants again very quickly. So it makes sense to you know that I'm going to create a bit of an opening towards the back. Because I'm going to plant some extra plants in here, and I want to be able to see where they're going to go. There's a really thick stem here. I'm going to plant, cut it right at the bottom. There you go, about two thirds. That's um, that is Hygrophila pantanal sp wavy, and I want to replant that. So I'm going to make sure I don't throw it away. 
do remember if you are throwing away any of your cuttings, please put them in a compost bin or in a proper waste bin. Don't throw them in anywhere where they can get into local aquatic habitats as invasive plants are a problem. I know that in Brazil, aquarists have introduced various plants from Asia, for instance, Rutala rotundifolia and other plants, because they like them into uh, ponds and lakes and of course inevitably uh, has disrupted the ecosystem it's a very egocentric thing to do and there's no excuse you can't claim ignorance there's enough information out there these days to tell you don't add non-native species to a habitat i think we all know that by now I think that uh, okay, so David Brown's Brown's million here. He tried to keep using it because it is it goes so fast the investment that it just takes a lot of work. I mean, it takes a lot of work if you're like Dave and you fine tune every little stem and you get the tank looking absolutely perfect. If you're like me and you're a bit more, yeah, I'll let it grow, then uh, that's not such an issue. One of the other things, pruning, it's really useful because it brings light down to other plants. Now, I'm using a ADA solar RGB here, so everything's getting quite a lot of light. It is easy for one plant like this one to dominate, shade out others. And uh, so you need to go in, prune, open up some spaces. You can already see, I, I pulled out a fair, fair bit, but not actually that much. I had to start, I was selecting individual stems. Now I'm sort of just snipping away at bunches because there is so much of this stuff. So we sort of prune that back. Mostly there's a few bits. It's important to keep looking, bend down and look into the front of the tank, see what you're doing. It's very easy to prune from above, but you might not see exactly what you're doing. And uh, other things grow back. It's a good idea to come down, look see where you want to go. So I'm just putting some of the taller ones at the back. Okay, a bit more space. I've left the myriophyllum for now. That's one I'm going to plant pretty much straight away. So I'm not even going to take it out. It doesn't like being out of water even for a short amount of time. So I'm now going to prune the myria and to prune that one quite low down. So you can, you can feel a bit bad, like, oh, it's taken, you know, so many weeks to grow, grow this tall and now I'm cutting it back. But again, we want denser growth. And for that, we need to prune fairly. All right, I'm going to plant those farther back. In that rear corner, I'm just going to use this little net, just a fine net, start Missing out some of the leaves. Of course, they'll go everywhere. I don't have a skimmer on this. I'd like one, but I haven't managed to do that yet. Tweezers. These are some fairly robust tweezers. And I'm going to use them to plant the myriophyllum this back corner. So I can push them really deep down into the substrate. This plant pops up quite easily, so it's good to make sure it's well down in the substrate, at least an inch or two. The idea is that this plant is a sort of accent, it'll Grow right up to the surface, show a little bit of orange hints in the back. That's that. So now I want to prune the other side. And to go from the top, there's a really thick uh, pegastamine piece here. Go down there. And if you haven't got space for your plant cuttings, you don't necessarily need to throw them away. You've probably got friends or aquarium 
hobbyists that you know that would appreciate them. I was really impressed when I went to Chicago this summer and I was uh, invited to give a talk by the Chicago Aquatic Plant Society who hosted me beautifully and were all absolutely wonderful. And at their club meeting, they had a, um, a plant swap. So it wasn't sales, it was just trading. Like you have a bit of this plant and I'd like a bit of that plant. It was a really, really nice idea actually. And they were just trading cuttings, no money changing hands. I think thought that was great. You can also, which I sometimes do, take your cuttings to an aquarium store and say, hey, would you give me some store credit for this? And they may say yes, they may say no, but no harm in asking. Here at the back here is where I want to put some things. I'm just, I'm just clearing out some room. I'm going to plant my Ludwigia back there. So I'm moving a few bits elsewhere. Poor Persicaria, I rediscovered it, it's, it's completely shaded over and it's actually not thriving back here. So I'm going to take it out. Oops, sorry about the noise. You can see the stems are a bit, leaves are sort of rotted away at the top where it's just been complete shadow. So I'm going to pull out the surviving stems. Sometimes the plant works, sometimes it doesn't work, you know. Poor thing. And uh, those surviving stems, I'm going to plant them in another tank later on. Got a lot of this pigestament, it's actually taken up quite a bit of room here at the back too much room so I'm going to just pull it out this is mass that is a lot of plant oh, there's some more persicaria that was you can see not happy at all I'll find a home for that it's a bit more there's more there's always more this plant is such a beast ah, this is the hygrophila wavy slightly thicker leaves I want to keep that so this hygrophila wavy I want to keep that in there Going to plant it back here. Then we've got this hygrophila, or this sperma. It's a really great plant. It's often sold as a sort of beginner plant. I'm going to get in and prune it. The polysperma grows pretty densely. And actually, I think I want to um, plant, replant the cuttings because it, it was a little bit leggy and I don't want it leggy, I want it really dense. So I'm just going to hang those over there. The other thing you can do, you get in with your hand and select that stem to about two thirds of the way down, prune it if you don't want to just hack away at stuff. a bit drastic this pruning but as I said the plants will bounce back very quickly certainly these fast growing stem plants you keep up your nutrient regime make sure they get the light they need they will come back The other thing I've done, which perhaps you guys have seen, I've put a black background on this tank. I thought it added a bit to the, the mystery of it all. I have a finer pair of tweezers, but I really like these heavy, thick ones. They're sort of no nonsense. Plants can't argue with you. They're going in the, in the soil whether they like it or not. And uh, I'm just going to replant tiger filler quickly. I'm not going to plant every single bit because there's a lot of it in here. And as I said, because we've cut it, when you cut these stem plants, they tend to put out two new heads, two new bits of growth. Like a medusa, you hack off one head and two come back. And you hack off those two and four come back and so on. 
And so actually, by chopping it back like this, it's going to come back much denser. I am going to take these cuttings along with a lot of the pigestinum to one of my local fish shops and just say, hey, I have all of this. Because then they bunch it up and they sell it. And, you know, even if it's just trade it for a bit of food or a couple of fish, maybe one other plant, you know, it's better than throwing it away. But, yeah, ask around. You may have friends who want some. It's really good for people who are trying to get into the hobby, you know. It's not cheap. And uh, there's loads of forums, and people will often be very generous and will post you plants, uh, sometimes just for the cost of the postage, sometimes for free. The leaves that are accumulated up here, because they're getting in the way now. I'm sure most of you watching would know very well how to prune plant a tank by now, but you know, this is part of the update. I'm trying to keep people informed of the basics as well as all the rest, and I want to show the evolution of this tank, and this is an important part of it. Right, so now we can see a bit more what's going on. And there's a few other bits to prune kind of here and there. A few other stems come out, just a bit bit dense. I mentioned that there's some java fern leaves that are a bit old and decrepit, and you literally can just pinch those out at the base, sort of pull them out. You see they've got sort of, they're a bit black. Sorry, shrimp. <laughs> little cherry shrimp. Just saying, what's going on? By doing that, taking out those old leaves, we stimulate the plant to put energy into its healthier leaves or put out new small leaves. Let's pull it out. You don't have to be too crazy. Obviously, the pros, I'm spending a long time pulling out every single bad leaf. Can leave your java ferns looking a little denuded if you pull out all of the leaves, but they will actually look healthier and they'll all grow back. Pasta. You could try and snip them out, I suppose, but it's easier just to feel down to the plant where you start to feel the base of it and the stem narrows. Isn't sorry, the plant the leaf narrows down to the stem. And you can just pinch it. And if it's this is the other clue, if it's a leaf that's red should come off, it'll come off really easily. And if it's a strong, healthy leaf, you're gonna have to tugging and pinching and twisting and that's telling you leave it alone. The java ferns they put the, out new little plantlets on the tip of the leaf. And Dave from Aquarium Gardens he always says pinch those off and that prevents the fern from letting the main leaf kind of decay. It's always forcing it back into better condition. It hasn't finished its job of um, putting out a plant that yet. Sorry, fish. I know. I know. You're not impressed at all. That's fair. Are there any other strikingly obvious fern leaves that could come out? Well, that needs to be pinched off. Here's one. Yeah. Should have drained some of the water out of the tank first, maybe. Okay, a bit of spillage happens. Let's get our net. Mess up those leaves. You know, you'll be netting up leaves for a while. Grab some, come back, get the rest. Sometimes it's easier, yeah, turning off the filter, and then everything just floats up. It can be swiftly netted out. I like to leave the filter on if I can. Better for the filter. You can see a bit better what's going on in the display now. And just wipe that off. The some loose moss. Yeah. Fish have got a bit more room to swim. They're not quite sure what to do with it yet. But I'm going to be planting in some stems 
which would include the Lindernia. So I'm going to be planting in some stems, which include the Ludwigia pollicis mini and the Myriophyllum sp Guyana, which is a lovely soft textured plant. I think I needed a few more softer textures in there. So we'll put those in next. So we've got our nicely pruned tank ready to add three new uh, species into here. We've got Myriophyllum Guyana, which is this, which got a lot of lovely, beautiful, bushy, light green plant. We have the Ludwigia Palustris Mini, which is a wonderful crimson color. And then I've got the Gestamen Stellatus. This is a tropica plant, which is gonna go in there. So yeah, without further ado, let's plant these up. I think I'm gonna start with the Stellatus at the back. This is a lovely plant. It, uh, you can see it's very similar to the Augustaman quadrifolius. It gets these wonderful purplish pinkish tips on the leaves under high light. And so we just, I've just pushed the whole plant in here and I'm going to let it sit on the right side here. It'll complement the Augustaman quadrifolius that's on the left. Start with the first, first one. This is a collection of stems and I really want the color going almost to the back here. So I'm going to start by pushing it deep into the substrate. And then I'm going to have it coming forward towards us through this area here, which is really nice. I'm going to put this one down here. Now I had talked about keeping this tank really just sort of greens and very light and no sort of great contrast, but I saw this plant and I was just like, you know what? I want it. I want some real color in here, some explosive color. This small bit, we're going to put all the way back here. Another load. So I'm sort of getting three or four stems together and then using the thick tweezers, pushing them right down into the substrate. So this bit is going to come forward to that gap there. So yeah, initially it'll look a little bit tired and unhappy and uh, it'll recover soon enough. So those will grow up and fill out and form this sort of diagonal line coming through here. So it's not too central because I've pushed it going back into that rear corner. Let's net out some of the many, many loose leaves. This is when a skimmer would be very useful. When you do this, double check that you don't, you're not messing up any shrimp. If you've got shrimp in your tank, I find they often like to cling on to a floating leaf. And then you net up the leaf and you throw it out along with poor shrimp. All right, we're going to put the last plant in there now, which is the Myriophyllum SP Guyana. This has also come out of the tank that Arvel did. I'm going to see if I can push this whole bit in, you can see there's quite a bit in there, in one go. Because that's going to keep, give us that impact that we want. There's actually still some myriophyllum in the way. It may have to come out. Right, this is sort of, here's one I grew earlier. And grown fantastically well by Dave and the team over at Aquarium Gardens. I'm just going to push that right in, get all the roots in. Look at that, Ooh, splash water everywhere, that's okay. I'm just going to replant the uh, loose bits of Myriophyllum. Right now the Myriophyllum Marima sort of disappeared at the moment as it's been uh, hidden behind the Guyana. That's fine and actually I don't know what I want because it's going to grow up. Oh, come on leaf. It's going to grow up. Myriophyllum Guyana, it's going to come over, fill out this bit and uh, bring some nice orange, subtle orange tones. There, that's filled out. Should give the, uh, the guestman a run for its money. One pruned tank. Now, I haven't cut back the Myriophyllum 
Guyana that I've added in there yet. I'm going to let that find its feet, give it a few days to settle in before I start hacking at it. So I've just added it to the display. We can see there are some fish in here now. <laughs> they're, they're okay, they're a little, perhaps a little shell shocked, although the Rasboras are just seeming keen to eat and have some food, which is great. And they tend to hang out near the surface, whereas the black neons, sort of mid and lower levels, which is really nice. The sparkling garamis have gone into hiding. I'm sure they'll emerge later on. I don't normally mix fishes from different regions, but this sort of happened and actually it works quite well. So now I need to wait for the plants to settle in. The Ludwigia palustris, it looks a bit battered, bent right now. That'll unfold, grow up towards the light in the next few days. The Miriophyllum guyana will also settle in, those stems will reach up to the light. The Pigestum and Salatus that's in the back uh, corner there, that will, it's currently in its immersed form as the supplier sells it, but it'll I'll start putting out submersed leaves. And I'm hoping it will lean over this way, bring a bit of color onto this side, a bit of pink. The Mirifilum SP Roram, which is in the back corner now, will grow up quite tall. And what I'll do is I will cut the Mirifilum Diana, the green one, a bit lower, so that the orange of the Mirifilum Rorama fills that back rear corner at a, right at the top. So you have this soft green blending into a soft orange, which should be very nice. Then you've got the vivid red of the Ludwigia, which will blend into pinks and slight purples from the Pagestum and Stellatus, which will then go into the pale greens of the Hygrophila polysperma once that fills up there. So yeah, I always find it quite hard after pruning the tanks. I'm like, oh, that jungle look is gone. But it also allows light to get down to everything else. It lets you inspect your fish, inspect the layout to see that kind of everything is doing what you want it to do. And the fish are just, well, they were hunting for food just now, so they can't be too traumatized. So guys, thank you very much. And this was a bit of a slow video. I appreciate it's uh, not that exciting pruning some plants, but I want to follow the story of this display. And this is the first time I've pruned it. So I figured I would add that to the series of videos about this tank. So thank you very much and take care.